Hey guys, welcome back for another video. Today I'm going to do a comparison video of GoPro 10 versus GoPro 11. So let's quickly see what comes in the box for GoPro 10. This is uh, additional with accessory, the GoPro 10, it's brand new for me. As you can see, the branding on the side. For after GoPro 9, it has started to come in blue color. Previous to that, I think it was in white. So 10 black, as well as GoPro logo in blue color. It also comes with some mounts and stick. Let's not talk too much about that. Let's see quickly in the box what comes in the box for GoPro 11. As you can see, very simple, same. The only thing that has changed between GoPro 11 and GoPro 10 is this. They have removed zero and put one here. Other than that, at least on the exterior, there are no changes. Everything looks exactly similar to how GoPro 10 was. Obviously, devil is always in the details. So again, with this newer GoPro 11 model, that is the case here. So let's talk about the similarities first and then I can cover like the differences. So when it comes for similarities, both of them are 153 grams. Nothing has changed. So the weight remains same. All the exterior dimensions. If you haven't seen the previous video, I've already done a review of GoPro 10, GoPro 9 and GoPro 11. Not a review like a comparison in which I told you that. So the media mode from GoPro 9 fits GoPro 10 and 11. So exterior wise, there is no difference. They are exactly same, right? And then both of them are waterproof till the 10 meter. So that still exists. That is true for GoPro 11 as well as GoPro 10. And also one very good thing that came in GoPro 10 was the hydrophobic lens cap or lens cover that still exists in GoPro 11. So that is a really good thing if you don't know about it. So whenever you're in, let's say it's raining or something, so the water won't stay on your lens. It will just wipe off or it will just slide down from your lens cover. So your videos will not be blocked with the view of some water on your lens. So that is a really good thing. Other than that, on the similarity front, both of them, as I told you, exterior wise, they look the same, they feel the same, they weigh the same, but on the inside, I will tell you quickly that there is one change. So on the inside, there is one change, which is about the battery. All right. So as you can see, this is GoPro 11. And when I open this battery case, you see that it comes with the white battery, which is, they call it Enduro battery. This can withstand really cold weathers like minus 10 to minus 30 degrees whereas the standard GoPro battery which is blue in color that used to come with GoPro 10 it's good I mean it's not bad but in some colder weathers you definitely want to get that white battery because that is enduro battery this one is just standard battery so GoPro 11 comes with the enduro battery that is a really good thing so the battery capacity is still the same it's 1720 million mAh both of them are 1720 mAh so the chemical composition of this enduro battery is different from the standard one so that is why it can withstand those extreme weathers but other than that the capacity wise it is same so I expect to see similar kind of results when you are shooting or recording for a longer time just want to mention one thing that the enduro battery is going to last longer in colder weather other than that, I think they are going to behave or at least give similar performance. All right, once we have covered all the exterior things that you can see from outside, let's cover the inside details. So in the inside details, I want to talk about the sensor upgrade. So this year we have a new sensor, which is eight is to seven. So eight by seven sensor, which to be honest is really good. And I'll tell you the reasons why it is really good because recording in 8 is to 7 ratio allows you to crop your videos to 9 is to 16 for let's say TikTok or Instagram reels and you can do 1 is to 1 for your Instagram posts right and then 16 is to 9 that you can use for YouTube so this sensor opens up all these capabilities and you can obviously if you are someone who is like a creator and really active on social media this is going to serve you really well because it you can crop as per your convenience as per the platform you're using so this 8 is to 7 sensor is going to be really handy in that case so all the content creators out there if you are thinking about gopro 10 versus gopro 11 go with GoPro 11 in that case. Other than that, if you're just capturing the moments for your personal life, for your personal memories, 
then I would say if you want to save some money, go with GoPro 10. It's still a really good camera. Let me also cover that with GoPro 11. Now you can record in 10 bit color. This is a very big deal for those who like to shoot raw and then like to color grade their videos. For them, it's a really good and very big feature, I would say. But to most of the people like just shooting just point and shoot people they're not just doing color grading they rely mostly on the default settings that comes with gopro they're not going to see that much of a difference but for those content creators looking for that extra punch in their videos extra quality something different 10 bit recording is a really big feature in gopro 11. also with the new sensor in gopro 11 you also get the slightly higher resolution bump. I would say photo resolution bump is there. In that case, the GoPro 11 comes with the 27 megapixel snaps versus 23 megapixel snaps that was supported on GoPro 10. So that is slightly higher resolution for GoPro 11 when you are clicking or taking the photos. Let's cover some stabilization features. As you already know, both of these GoPro devices are incredibly stable. When you're shooting your videos with these devices, let's say you're doing some adventure stuff or running around or something, the kind of footage, the stabilized footage that you get with these GoPro is immaculate. I mean, obviously there have been a lot of improvements in that front and GoPro is kind of leading the way in that scenario. But with GoPro 11, now you get HyperSmooth 5.0 with Auto Boost. HyperSmooth 4.0, which was there in GoPro 10, was the best stabilization that I had noticed so far, right? But with GoPro 11, the HyperSmooth Stabilization 5.0 is just next level. I am going to put some videos out there. So if you want to see the comparison of that HyperSmooth 4.0 to 5.0, just subscribe to my channel. I will be posting those videos and don't miss those videos because that's a really good feature. At the end, to wrap up, I will just compare their prices. So the price of GoPro 10 as of now is $449.99, so $450 if you are buying it without the subscription, right? And obviously GoPro has this subscription thing which gives you one year subscription of cloud, GoPro cloud, where you can save your images. You can save a lot of money on their accessories as well. But with GoPro 11, the actual cost is $500. GoPro 10, actual cost is $450. And obviously with that subscription feature, it is much cheaper. So GoPro 11 comes out to be $400 with the yearly GoPro subscription and 10 comes out to be $349 or $350. So $50 difference in the price. If you're buying in 2022 September or October timeframe, I would recommend going with GoPro 11. That $50 difference is not that much and you get this battery, which is anyways costs around $70. So, and if you're someone who goes to or are shooting in a colder weather you definitely need one of those enduro batteries so price is almost compensated with that upgraded sensor which opens a lot more capabilities for you i would recommend going with gopro 11 in 2022 so guys if you like this video give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel and see you in the next one